The Tang Dynasty Tour Chapter 2 Chang'an in a Dream Chapter 10 Doing good deeds makes people happy. Yunye did not get a new official position but only confirmed his noble status. He didn't know how Emperor Li Er considered it. The news of the impending locust plague was not made public in the court. The court was blocking the news, which was a common trick used by rulers. After bidding farewell to Lao Chen, Yun Ye's face suddenly became ugly. Needless to say, Li Er was suspicious, suspicious of the accuracy of the news, and maybe even suspicious of Yun Ye's purpose in doing so. Looking up at the gloomy sky, Yun Ye smiled bitterly. Suspicion is the greatest virtue of a ruler. Who said that Yun Ye only hoped that the historical records were wrong, and hoped that the heavy snow in the past few days could alleviate the disaster? Let the cold come more violently. Freeze all the locusts to death in this cold winter. I did what I should do, even what I shouldn't do, I have a clear conscience. This was Yun Ye's answer to himself. I even prayed to God to send heavy snow to kill the locusts. When he thought of this, he felt that he had become taller. The locusts came at the latest in May, which was the time for the wheat to turn yellow and the summer harvest. People had to harvest, and the locusts also had to harvest. It depended on who was faster. Who cares, I'm not a god, and I don't live on gratitude. This is a feudal dynasty, the world of the Li family. If I make everyone grateful, I guess it won't be long before I lose my head. The people can only be grateful to one person, that is Li Er. Even Li Chengqian dares not take the comment that the world is grateful to him. I'd better forget it. Da Ya and Xiao Ya are still waiting for me to cook for them. When he thought of this, he felt relieved. He drove away the extra servants, took only Zhuang Santing and Lu Jinbao, and rushed to the West Market on horseback. There were more spice and drug stores than vegetable markets. Kasha bark, tangerine peel, star anise, cardamom, and pepper. These five spices have been widely used as herbs in traditional Chinese medicine. I don't know when soy sauce will appear, so don't think about delicious braised spare ribs. Braised spare ribs are no problem, and sweet and sour spare ribs are no problem. Yun Yi cursed the Tang dynasty for its lack of materials while sucking his saliva. Damn it, there's not even rock sugar. Fortunately, there's sugar frost, which is still black. The problem of refining has not been solved. I'll try to make hundreds of kilograms of rock sugar when I have time. What a source of wealth! Under the strange gaze of the shopkeeper of the pharmacy, Zhuang Santing swept away the five spices in the pharmacy, filling five bags full and told the shopkeeper to send them back to the Marquis Mansion. He ignored the advice of the doctor in the store. What kind of medicinal materials must be matched, what kind of monarch, minister, envoy and assistant have their specific functions, and what kind of cold, heat, summer, and coolness are distinguished what do these damn quacks know if you have the ability, you can borrow life first. Isn't it like playing a big axe in front of Lu Ban's gate to talk about medicinal materials in front of my lord who said that medicinal materials must be used to make medicine will I tell you that my lord uses medicinal materials to cook such a profound thing. Note, Lu Ban is revered as the god of carpentry and masonry in Chinese folk religion. 
The warm sunshine in the morning shone on the body, making people relax and feel lazy. The master and servant wandered in the West Market. When they saw something interesting, they stopped to have a look. They bought whatever they liked and threw it to Lujinbeo to put in his bag. In a short while, the two guys were full of things on their bodies and hands. Lujinbeo held a sesame cake in his mouth and ate it while walking. It's good to have a big mouth. Zhuang Santing tried to stop Lu Jinbeo's indecent behavior but was stopped by Yun Yi. Zhuang Santing always advised Lord Ho to establish a family style. As Lord Ho started with military achievements, he should be militarized, standardized, and ritualized. All of them should follow the example of Zhou Yuvai. This is in line with the rules of the general's family. Note, Ho means the marquee. Yunyi has never figured out why Li Er counted potatoes and other achievements as military achievements. Does it mean that I have to stay in the military camp for the rest of my life? The civil servants are very jealous of these achievements. The Chunfang officials repeatedly report to the emperor, saying that this great auspiciousness has never been heard of since ancient times. It is a gift from heaven and should be sacrificed to heaven to thank God's grace. By the way, let Lan Tianho go to Sinong Temple to cultivate auspicious and good seeds. This was originally the result that Yun Yi hoped for most, but Li Er refused because he was not yet an adult and was not yet competent for the job. The Zhou Yuvai's errand was also relieved, and Yun Yi was asked to return to the mansion to wait for orders. Yun Yi hoped His Majesty the Emperor could forget himself and let him live his life comfortably. The crowds in the Western Market were bustling, and although they did not reach the point of waving their sleeves like clouds, they were still shoulder to shoulder. Strangely enough, Wherever Yun Ye went on the narrow street, the crowd there would automatically disperse, let alone touch, even their eyes would not meet. When Yun Ye was secretly proud of his domineering aura, he suddenly saw the gold fish bag hanging from his waist, and next to it was the milky white jade pendant that his grandmother had just hung on in the morning. The two reflected each other, making him look very rich. Then he looked at the sky-blue brocade robe on his body, the gold crown on his head, and the two burly and mighty guards behind him. He suddenly understood why others did not dare to approach him. I am no longer a commoner with ten dollars in my pocket and fooling around in the streets, but a dignified marquee. Looking at the tourists in the market again, they were wearing linen clothes of various colors, and a few of them were wearing brocade. As the end of the year approached, both the rich and the poor bought a few meters of linen for their wives and children to sew new clothes. Those with better family conditions would carry half a piece of brocade on their shoulders, saying that it was prepared for the girl in the family who was about to get married. He would show off to everyone, saying that the brocade from Shu was expensive, but his daughter was going to marry a clerk in the Ministry of Industry. The official family's face was not good, so he had to grit their teeth and buy it, etc. Yun Ye knew that he had embarrassed himself. A nouveau rich in a brocade robe was walking in the western market where commoners frequented. In later generations, he particularly hated this kind of person. Although he was suspected of sour grapes, he hated nouveau riche because they built their happiness on the pain of others. The petty citizens could only curse a few words in their hearts. Yun Ye did not think that the citizens of Chang'an in the Tang dynasty would be more noble than the petty citizens of later generations. Judging from the viciousness of the people in Guangzhou, 
his ancestors had probably been scolded to pieces long ago. His face was burning and his ears were hot. He turned around and glared at the two fools. I don't remember that nobles generally don't go to the western market. Don't you two fools know that are you waiting to see me make a fool of myself he raised his foot and kicked the two of them hard. The two guys didn't care at all. The Marquis's fancy footwork couldn't hurt them. Besides, the Marquis was a spoiled child who was used to taking out his anger on his servants. However, it was just a matter of a few kicks. There would always be a reward afterward. Didn't you see that Zhuang Santang was kicked and kicked into the head of the guards Lu Jinbao always went to the Marquis when he had nothing to do. He often left refreshed after being kicked. The master and servant trio fled the western market in a sorry state. As soon as they left the market, Zhuang Santang suddenly grabbed Yunya and dodged in front of him. Before the things in his hand landed, his fist had already smashed out. He punched a person, to be exact, a scholar, with grey hair, a tall and thin figure, wearing a wide-sleeved robe. Although it was washed white and covered with patches, it was clean and tidy. The stitches on the patches were fine, which showed that he cherished it very much. He had a cloth towel tied around his head and foot clothes on his feet. One of his shoes had fallen off to the side. His body was hunched over and trembling. Old Zhuang's punch just now was not light. Marquis, this kid has been following us from the market. Now that he has jumped out, I'm afraid he has ulterior motives, so I made the first move. Zhuang Santang reported to Yun Yet. He patted old Zhuang on the arm, signaling him to relax. Why are you following us you are a scholar, so you shouldn't have any ulterior motives. Why Yun Ye squatted down and asked. Give me ten guan of money, and my life is yours. This sentence stunned Yun Yet. Ten guan of money. One life what kind of person is this just as he was about to leave, he saw a pair of blood red eyes, full of pleading and sadness. His slender hands were tightly clenched, and his fingernails were broken without his noticing. Yun Ye suddenly felt that this person was very interesting. He was undoubtedly proud. Although he was lying on the ground, he raised his head. Blood was oozing from his nose, but he did not wipe it. He stared at himself, waiting for his decision. You are a proud person, why do you debase yourself? I have been poor and down on my luck all my life. I dare say I have also read the five classics thoroughly. To stand out from the crowd, I hung a beam from the ceiling and stabbed my thigh with an awl for twenty years of learning, and then I traveled and studied for ten years, but I have achieved nothing and still have to rely on my wife's weaving to make a living. How can I bear this now she is seriously ill and needs expensive medicine to survive? I owe her, so I will use my life to repay her. Sure enough. The past and present are the same. After decades of hard work, one illness takes you back to square one. Yunye did not intend to doubt it. Although he had been deceived countless times in his former life, Yunye still stubbornly chose to believe it this time. He liked beautiful things and liked to see the true feelings in the world. He did not care about money in his former life when he was a poor ghost, let alone now that he was rich. Ten guan of money was nothing. He would just treat it as doing a good deed. A real man should not humiliate himself. 
What is ten guan of money just now, my guard injured you? As compensation, these two silver ingots will be considered as medicine expenses. Take care of yourself. After saying that, Yunya asked Lu Jinbao to take out two tentail silver ingots and put them in Qian Tong's hands. He cupped his hands and turned to leave. Qian Tong's tears streamed down his face. He grabbed the two silver ingots and watched Yunya leave. He knelt on the ground and kowtowed three times. He put on his shoes and stumbled towards the pharmacy. Doing good deeds makes one feel good. He had already forgotten the embarrassing thing that had happened just now. He retrieved the horses he had left behind, and the three of them returned to the Yun mansion, chatting, and laughing.